Hi. Okay, back again with the next part of the Queen Shamia story. Now, as I told you before, I have just completed a 25-year prison sentence. And going through prison was something very, very different. It was something I never, ever thought that I would experience in my life. But I have no regrets whatsoever of having been there. I'm not ashamed of the experience. And I'm not ashamed of anyone I made contact with. I met some wonderful women. I also met some monsters. But I met a lot of broken women who were really in desperate need of hope and belief and strengthening. I experienced some hilariously funny things and some terribly sad. It is an underground society, a society within your society that is very real and has touched so many families. So I, I would like to say that there is so many things that this government attempted to break me. When I was arrested, I was in solitary confinement where I was for 298 days. I could not be in general population because they said I would take over the jail. There was not a window and you could not see whether it was day or night. And research had shown that a person starts to lose their mind after 10 days of being confined in such a state. I did two days shy of 300. I am proud to say I am made of some real strong stuff. And prison did not even scratch me, let alone break me. And I would also like to tell you once again that whatever you're going through in your life, if it's a situation that is dangerous and violent for you, leave. There's always a way to leave. Sometimes you have to be a little resourceful. But you have a right to make decisions over your own life. And you have a right to change directions. And this goes for my sons and my daughters, but especially the women. You have a right. Now, I was facing 85 years, and I was in the newspapers for approximately seven years. I made headlines more times than I care to mention, and uh, there were all kind of, oh, graphic stories painted about me. And I never gave defense, and once again, I never gave interview. For everything, there's a season and a time. And so my time to tell my story is now. It was not then. That was a season of sorrows. And I had a sacrifice that I had to make. Sometimes you have to go through difficult things in your life. You are not going to be able to stop the flow of that. But if you're going through difficult times, you keep your head up. You stay strong. And don't let fear be part of your makeup. Because fear is the most crippling of emotions. So regardless of what you're going through or how difficult it may be, you keep your head up and make decisions that are right for you. Now, while I was in county and facing 85 years, which anything over 20 years is considered a life sentence. So I was sentenced to a life sentence. There's only one thing that I knew for sure, and that is that I love. I love him, and he loves me, and I love me. And so whatever direction my path would take, I was going to take it with honor and with pride, as well as humility. There's a time to bow down to your circumstances, and there's a time to fight against them. May you have the wisdom to know the difference. So as I was facing all of these years, I really didn't believe that it was going to happen, that I was actually going to go to prison because it was absolutely absurd. My people committed over 20 robberies. The monetary value of these robberies was $1,328. They left all of their fingerprints, they blew kisses to the cameras, they plan to get caught and give testimony to the world 
that their queen had not been honored properly in this country. I took responsibility for all of this, thinking that they would simply want to be reimbursed. But there were people who marched for me, and I would like to thank you for that. There were thousands who signed petitions for me, and I offer my thanks for that. And so the government considered me to be too big of an effect on the people. Now, I, I went through my time in, in prison. It became very, very clear when I entered that there was no place for me there because the people were, well, <laughs> very different. It's a very hardcore, dangerous kind of place. But I decided upon my arrival that there was no space for me there, and so I would create my own space. And that would be that. And that is exactly what I did. I did not forget who I am. I held tight to the fact that I am Queen Shamia. I did not let myself forget it, and I did not let them forget it either. If you know who you are, don't let anyone change your mind. You remain true to you. If you can't be true to anything else in your life at this time, you be true to who you are, and you honor the legacy that you represent. And so my worth to me was greater than a prison sentence, a life prison sentence. And so I say to you at, at this point that once again, whatever you're suffering, if you're going through a time where you're having to start all over again and you don't know how you're going to do that, that is the position that I am in. Because after over 20 years of being away, you must build all over again. You start again, you have no resources to start with. But the best thing you can go forth with is to believe in life in love and in who you are. I love talking to you, and I'm going to talk to you again. But this is just a little part two of my story and what happened when I was in prison. You have a beautiful, beautiful day. Beautiful day. Happiness and smiles to you. Until next time.